Okay, let's uh, go ahead and begin. So, good morning again, everyone, or perhaps afternoon, evening, wherever you might be in the world. Yeah, this is a possibly a world thing. Good morning. Um, this morning I'm going to be running Gold Box. First of the Azure Bonds to start with. I've said this is the first one I want to uh, run right now since I'm... Uh, just doing regular running because just like Secret of the Silver Blades uh, a little more than a week ago, I think This is the uh, I have not yet completed an official run using the new Time frame of DOS box. It's on 6,000 cycles now instead of 3,000. So that is going to uh, pretty much give me an automatic PB So I'm not too too out of uh, practice with this because I did do one practice run with it under the new thing and uh, offline without recording just to, to see, and yes, it's about 10 minutes faster. I've also done it a couple of times as part of the uh, multi-game runs that I did earlier, transferring over uh, into Curse and then on the one from Curse and Silver Blades, so uh, this will be fun and interesting and quite a bit faster than my run was at... Uh, RPG Olympic last year. Go ahead and get started. So Curse of the Azure Bonds is the second in the gold box series. Get faster. Memorize our spells. We have mostly fighters. We have one cleric. For a uh, few spells, mostly healing. Should have done that too before. We are uh, adventurers who have solved the riddle of the Pool of Radiance in Flan, but now we've woken up uh, losing all of our stuff. We were left in an inn with some money, which is convenient, so we can buy some provisions for ourselves. up arrows on two characters to begin with. Our characters will switch between uh, ranged and melee fairly reliably at first until we get our powerful weapons. Our cleric we're going to leave on range the entire game. The rest of us are uh, whatever. So we come to the stage to find out when we had our stuff taken we also had these bonds put on us. These weird magical glowing tattoos on our arms. Five symbols, uh, and we have no idea what's up with that. And we're trying to find out. Sage Falani doesn't know much, though, and as we're trying to leave the city, the king shows up. Unfortunately, the uh, pawn suddenly causes us to try to attack the king. Turns out it isn't actually the king, it's a... Uh... Turns out that it's, uh, in fact... Yeah. Somebody he was pretending to be the king. He knows that these fire knives are uh, after him, so he... Uh was, uh, had a, uh, a, what, what would you call it, a, uh, somebody to take his place who could speak like him. And, but the guards come after us because we revealed ourselves as the assassin. It turns out the Fire Knives are one of the groups controlling us and they can use the bonds to force us to obey them. So we really need to get rid of these bonds because, uh, we're the servants of, uh, powerful of these powerful groups because of that intent on doing evil. Um, that is not the spell I wanted. I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Oh well. Okay. Be used to doing Synchro Silver Blades, which requires actually different controls. Okay, so... Um, can't cast this tree, so. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. Now I can get the other fire knife is the most important to get. Nice! Three holds actually go quite a bit quicker. We'll go ahead and uh, auto combat from here. One guy managed to get away, so he's going to be paying to track down. But okay, that wasn't too bad a fight. Alright, so these thieves broke us out of prison when we surrendered to the guards, because of course we did, because that's uh, faster. We're saving the game because we don't want any random encounters. Uh, this is a set encounter against these poor doggos, though, so we're just going to cleave them up. So our objective first is to make our way from the thieves' hideout, which is being run over overrun by the fire knives. They're Thieves Guild of Tilverton and the Fire Knives are opposed to each other. The Fire Knives, you know, want to overrun the entire kingdom. The Thieves Guild, just whatever. But uh, some of the Thieves have joined the Fire Knives as well. So there's a big civil war in, in the uh, lower reaches of the city where the Thieves Guild rests. And uh, so we need to track down the Fire Knife leader and convince him nicely to uh, take these bonds off of us. This door is hard to break into, but we made it. So now we're going to get our first very important magic item, uh, Dust of Disappearance. Yeah, you can have as well as this long sword band and mail dust last so that we can trade it around. Okay. That's the only stuff that's important right here, so now we have a chance to memorize our spells. Cast any, that's fine. All right. So first we need to make it from the Thieves Guild into the sewer, where things are actually quite a bit safer. Yeah, this isn't a place. Still going this way. All right. I go too early, that's the problem. And this is where I want to go through, though. I entered the sewers, and that was uh, actually minutes ago. Oh, well. Okay, these hot yugs we can bargain with. They want us to do something for them. We're not going to do it because uh, that's slow, but it helps us avoid other fights to go that way, so avoiding fights is very important. All right. Okay, took some damage there. Luckily, we can rest here. Okay, um, let's see. Violet is going to be taking the staff sling, and the bracers will be taken by nobody. Nobody really. Staff sling's the only thing you really need. It's a bit of experience, and uh, most importantly, that staff sling will keep our main cleric in the back pretty much the entire game safely and do a little bit more damage. So. Because uh, she didn't end up casting spells. Okay, yeah. We could train here if we had the experience. We don't. That's okay. Uh, this is going to. This is another secret door to get us through the. Uh, into the thieves' hideout. We want to save here because we can get encounters and we don't want encounters. Now we're safe, so we're fine. But here now we can get encounters again, so we save the game. Now we have one more treasure trove to get and then the game is going to be broken. All right, um, Violet needs this flail because it's nice, and Red needs the first longsword and the necklace. Okay, now, time to begin some shenanigans. Quit the game so that when I load up again, you will be, uh... We will be in the party formation screen. This will allow us to remove silver from the party. And now add this character called Bags, who we created before. 
And now we're going to give this magical stuff to Bags. Have him hold on to it for us. Now we remove him from the party. And then just drop the rest of the party. Which will take us back to the initial screen. Let us load up the game again. Add Bags back into the party. He has this stuff. We give it to Red. And then we remove him. Save the game. Add him back in again. Look at all this stuff that Red has now and trade it to Bags again. This is a uh, exploit that's in pretty much every gold box game. It's not really a bug because... Well, it isn't strictly intended, it's also just a piece of how the game uh, works. So, it's an exploit, definitely. So under the same spirit as glitches, so if I were to run this game glitchless, I would not be employing this uh, stupendous multiplying trick. But uh, getting all this stuff is really awesome, as we're going to see soon here. Okay, so, let's see. I only need to trade uh, one more sword. And all these, all these deaths and necklaces are super powerful magic items with a uh, few charges. Alright. Alright. So now, remove bags one more time. Add Silver back into the party so we can start giving him stuff. Now time to trade out these long swords. Long sword to Silver. Sword to Black. And Blue has his own long sword. We don't need this plus one long sword anymore. We used it for exactly one fight, but it helps against the rules. Alright, now we all need three necklaces. So he has four, so let's trade a one to Black. The dust doesn't matter who has it. Trade one to Black. Go to Black out his, so he needs one more necklace. Green has three necklaces, so he's fine, uh, but he can get rid of this stuff because now he's just going to be doing melee. Much faster and better with such a magical sword. Um, we can drop that, ready that staff sling. Okay, she has five necklaces, so we want to trade one to silver and one to black. Silver only gets one because he's going to be getting better uh, mage items down the line here, anyway. Okay, so we got three necklaces all. Now it's time to begin adventuring. Take a step. Now, um, fine, actually, I need to just make sure I don't take a step. Few items. Use the dust. Take a step. Surrender to the Fire Knights. They take us to our leader. They've captured the princess. The princess busts the head of the, uh, breaks out of her bonds. She's a very spunky princess. And, uh, brains the leader so the leader can't control us anymore. This allows us to start fighting the rest of the Fire Knives, and now things are going to, uh, get, go bad for them. We've used the Dust of Disappearance, which is an item of super invisibility. Uh, normally in D&D, when you have an invisibility spell, the invisibility is broken if you make an attack or, uh, cast a spell, an offensive spell at enemy, usually any spell, really. So, uh, you can use it to get sneak attacks on people, but then uh, once you've decided to do something to drop the illusion of uh, invisibility, you're exposed. But the Dust of Disappearance is a improved invisibility that doesn't go away. For any reason, really. So... All right, and so now the princess threatens the fire knife leader into letting us go, but we're kicked out of the city because we are being controlled by other people and we did attack the king, so that's the fire knife's dead. Now we journey on to Ashabin Ford via the wilderness. Doesn't matter, we get attacked by hippogriffs here. This is one of the uh, two wilderness encounters we're forced into over the course of the game. They both come really early before we next reach our next point. Okay, let's see. Okay, looks like they're all here. So, 
These uh, necklace of missiles have a limited number of charges, which is why we have multiple each, but they allow you to throw fireballs. They're very, very uh, high range in their damage, but considering that they hit automatically and do pretty much guaranteed damage to multiple people, they're still about the fastest way to inflict damage in this game. And it just so happens that we get both the necklace and the dust uh, very, very early, so they're very convenient items to use to own most of the game. Fortunately for the uh, interestingness of the speedrun, we have a number of enemies that we have to deal with uh, in the next two areas, which are immune to magic, to fireballs. Either they're immune to fireballs or they're extremely resistant and not worth uh, worrying about, so we won't be using them entirely. Uh... Dang him. Um, I can do it at December too, actually, doesn't matter. Journey to Assembra by trail. Uh, enter the city. Okay, now we need to go to the store. Pool our money. We need to identify something just to uh, share out our money. Let's see, we have 200 platinum, which is enough to uh, to train everybody at once, which is what's important for now. Um, yeah, so we go to the hall. The paladin can't train yet, and the uh, fighter mage can only train in uh, fighter level, can't train in mage level yet, but... Okay, the cleric now can memorize one more of these spells. The spell magic is fine. I have read the book Azure Bonds. It's been quite a while. I need to read it again. But uh, this game is actually a sequel to the book. It uh, is after the adventures of Dragon Bait and Elias and uh, Akbar Belakash, the rest of their allies, all of Ruskettle, all the rest that are in this book. So it's kind of interesting that it's a sequel to both Pool of Radiance, the game, and uh, Azure Bonds, the book. It was a very, very nice book. I started playing the game before I read the book, and then I found that it was in my dad's library just a couple years later when I was still just a kid and read it and quite impressed by it. So let's see. Guess all that's all we can do here for now. Now we're going to get our second uh, random encounter not random encounter, our forced wilderness encounter with the dragons, which are very dangerous. They only have 48 hit points, which is pretty low even for AD&D, but, uh, and that's kind of bad. Okay. We want them to, uh, group up close to us, so, okay, there's another one in there. Where's the third guy, though? There's the third one somewhere. The problem is that the trees are all randomly placed, so they can get in the way of us, uh, being able to if we get really lucky, all three dragons will be close together in one shot, and uh, makes it a lot... this fight go a lot faster. Okay. Where is it? Seven away in that direction. Okay, well... There we are. Um, yeah, that's safe, actually. That spot right there is quite safe. Okay, good. Okay, now we enter the city of Hap. We've taken a little bit of damage, but it's not a big deal. We could have camped beforehand. Hap is being uh, ruled over by a Efridi and his uh, Drow guards, and Drow are have 50% magic resistance, so they are almost impossible to hit with magic, which is very inconvenient. It means the necklaces and missiles are essentially useless. Uh, with these super powerful magic longswords we have, they're the second best longsword you can get in the entire game, and the last one you get only before the very final, final, final dungeon if you go for it. So, th it's pretty incredible that you get one, which is why we multiplied it out, too. It'll help out a lot in these uh, next two sections where so many enemies are immune to our, uh, to our thing there. Let's see, I think I used that. We'll go ahead and use Bless and Prayer before the fight as well. And now just auto-quick combat. I'm pretty sure I took the Nexus off everyone. I hope I did. I'm about to find out if I didn't. And they can't do anything to us because of the improvement of visibility. Not it only are, it, can we just not be targeted by spells and things or ranged weapons, but the enemy often won't even try to uh, properly uh, 
properly deal with that. So we've saved the city, so now we uh, found a map that will lead to Dracandros's lair. Dracandros is our next uh, problem we have to deal with. Plain and simple. Okay, so... Unfortunately, you don't have a lot of money, so we'll have to do some appraising, but that's okay. Um, into the wilderness, journey back to Assembra. We need to level up our uh, paladin and our... Uh, fighter mage. Okay, that was a good collection of jewelry. So now we have uh, all the money that we need. So we go to the hall, we can train up our paladin to level 6, and our fighter mage to level 5. This will give us the haste spell, which will double our number of attacks, which is very important for a fight coming up. It's almost impossible to uh, win the game otherwise. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to the end so we can get our memorizing done. We get a new magic missile spell, we need to memorize that haste spell. Um, let's see, and then our Bless and Prayer memorized again. Alright. Now we can journey back to Hap, via the wilderness, uh, enter the city. Now we are going to use this dust again. And then journey in the wilderness to the caves, and at the entrance we find a, a bunch of guards. So once again, with uh, super fast speed of combat as well, this is uh, at the cave of the Draco Lich that we've entered. Now it's time to get some uh, temporary upgraded equipment. Blue will take Drow Chain Mail, Black will take Drow Chain Mail, and Green will take Drow Chain Mail. This will is will be slightly better than our plate mail and double our movement speed from 6 to 12 squares per turn. Unfortunately, it is uh, it will go away after we leave this dungeon, but as long as we're in the dungeon, it's nice to have. And let's see. First, we need to go and get this mark for a uh, problem later on. This will help us avoid a fight. So this uh, Dark Elf Adventurer Lady... Uh, sh and flee. Silk is the leader of a group called the Swan Maze, and she wants us to get either Dragon Heart or Dragon Eggs for her, and in return gives us this, uh, this mark that will help us avoid encounter with some of these uh, Dark Elf patrols. For the most part, that's pretty negligible. We can just flee by stepping back from any patrols, but uh, it, uh, as I say, it's actually important for the next... Uh, yeah, it was a weird quirk, but it's uh, interesting storyline-wise. It's trying to show the power of uh, living under darkness and, and such uh, in this magical realm versus being in the light. The drow were extremely susceptible to light in all its forms. Okay, we'll go ahead and take draw chainmail for violet and for silver. We'll go ahead and drop that because he'll get better armor by the time that he uh, needs that. Um, she cannot afford to, though. Now we're in one of the tougher fights in the game. Ha ha ha. Okay, just for safety, because we have a lot of them, we're going to go ahead and use a dust so it doesn't go away anytime soon. And now we are going to save the game. And cast haste. And bless and prayer. And fight this, uh, Dracolich. Who has a, uh, ability to paralyze with his gaze even when we're protected by... Um, even more protected by dust disappearance. But luckily, we took him down without much problem. That's one of the two fights I sometimes have to reload. Okay, now we attack the wizard and these dragons. Dracandros's uh, idea, the what he wants to use us for, is pretty absurd. He wants to be a great wizard, and he wants to somehow do it by causing a war between the dragons and the humans, uh, and you know all the humanoid races, the dwarves, elves, humans, half elves, the rest, and uh, so. He uses the bonds to force us to attack this uh, illusionary dragon to try and convince the dragons that, yes, the humans are trying to go to war with us. But the dragons are smarter than that. They're like, dude, you're the ones who commanded them to do that. Why, you know, release them from the bond and we'll see if they still attack us. So uh, he's forced to do that. And we 
you can attack the dragons and it's a nasty fight. We could actually do it if we wanted to because uh, with the Dust of Disappearance, uh, even all these dragons are not that dangerous. We can carefully pick at them with our necklaces, but it would use up a lot of charges, so we don't want to do that if we can avoid it. Um, what am I trying to do? I don't even know anymore. Okay. Oh, uh, I need to use a dust. Cast a haste. Prayer and bless. This is the worst fight in the game coming up against uh, his Dark Elf Lord bodyguard, Burly. Now, if I get super duper lucky, I have like a 1 in 10, 1 in 20 chance, something crazy, of uh, hitting him with hold person. Oh, jeez. Um, that was uh, not good. He's already taken down one of my guys. That's pretty crazy. It is the uh, fighter magic user, so it's not super duper surprising, but uh, as it would be if it was someone else, but got him. Okay, awesome. You get a hold on him and that makes everything better. Okay, so now red can take this on stuff. This is a plus five draw longsword. Like the armor, it will disappear at the end of the thing, but uh, that's okay. We have it as long as we need it. Gonna go ahead and trade this to Violet, I suppose. No, I really shouldn't. She just... I kind of... Yeah, I'm going to. Drop the plate mail. Let her use that. Drop the drow chain as well. Just have her wear that and alone. Her movement's already too low because uh, we actually have too much money now. Okay, back up to the top here. Luckily, we can rest here. Fix up a bit and then uh, memorize our spells. Silver didn't get a lot of hit points, uh, ha ha ha. Unfortunately, we forgot to, uh, use the Dust of Disappearance, but that's okay, because that patrol is pretty weak. This is a, uh, and they have no spellcasters, so it's a whatever. Okay, an illusion of Burly is, uh, there. Let's see. This is a little bit slower, but it actually uh, will give us a superior position against these owl bears. Pick not found for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure quite what the problem with that is, but whatever. So the owl bears are vulnerable to magic, so we're going to go ahead and. Uh, oh darn, I accidentally got close enough to hit black. Okay, so I need to be a little more careful there. Right there is where I want to go. That'll get all the owlbears. Very nice. Okay, uh, you don't have a necklace, you quit combat. You don't have a necklace equipped, you quit combat. You don't have a necklace, you quit combat. You have a necklace, quit combat. Remove a necklace, quit combat. Take out the Dark Elves, and you quit combat. Alright. Usually, it, it is shorter uh, distance to go around the other way, but that position is much better to blow up the uh, owlbears with the fireballs. Okay, now this room we want to... Ah, uh, darn. A uh, Efridi led patrol is the worst of them. They're still pretty easy to cleave through. Other parts of the game, uh, I'm going to be, say, having to quit and reload whenever I get an encounter because they're just too long uh, most of the time. However, this area... This is one of the worst fights. It went a bit too long and I took a bit of damage, but oh well. But most of the fights in here are not all that bad. You only fight three or four enemies. We grabbed the dragon's egg that uh, Silk wanted. This is the next worst one with four Dark Elves. We're not actually going to give it to her because uh, that slow involves us going backwards and such. Now we take damage from this trap, which is unfortunate. Okay, now... Save the game, because this can be a dangerous point. Um, now a bunch of wyverns. Wyverns are dangerous because they can uh, use... They have poisonous stings in their tails, which they can use to uh, one-shot us. Poison is a one-shot ability in this game, absurdly. So blowing them up from afar with the fireballs is much better than getting in close and having a chance of dying from uh, 
from the poison. Unfortunately, they're in a uh, line position that makes it pretty tough to uh, hit multiple of them, but we can only hit like four at the most, I believe. Even so, it's better to use the fireballs than uh, to try and melee them, as they say. Because you can hit multiple times, again, guaranteed to hit, which is pretty uh, important. We're about to use up our first necklace of missiles each, I believe. Ha 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 ha. Oh jeez. Worst time to get this uh, particular encounter. Especially since I don't want to take my necklaces off because I want to use them in the next fight and I don't want to auto combat with necklaces because our characters will uh, use those in close combat regardless of the allies. Plus we can cheese, we're missing too. This is just bad. Very slow fight. Okay, finally. If I get one more fight right there, I'd rather actually reload. Okay, cast our haste spell. Bless and prayer. Now, Dracandros, the reason that we want to uh, use our... Uh, Fireballs here is because Dracandros can cast spells. Even though he can't target us with any spells and he won't, not even with things like Fireball, though well, they could theoretically be used to hit us, since you're not immune to magic, just immune to being targeted. Uh, he can cast a spell called Fire Shield, which will cause him to deal damage to people who hit him equal to what they uh, deal to him, and that's actually it, so okay, fine. That's all we need. Um, now we can just cleave them up as usual. The uh, Euphredi do take damage from Fireball, but it's uh, reduced, so they are sort of fire elemental. It's actually pretty rare in this game for monsters to have uh, fire resistance, resistance to any elements at all, actually. Uh, there's none of the dragons and such who uh, breathe their element are immune to it in first edition. Kind of a weird thing, but uh, convenient for our purposes for the most part. Salamanders are one of the things that actually are. Okay, so now, uh, Silver gets all the cool stuff in this fight now. He no longer needs this. And now, let's see, Wand Wandering. You can get a random encounter after this as well. It's, uh, unbelievably. Okay, we're actually really hurt. Uh, now we're gonna go into the wilderness, we're gonna depart. Okay, and that's uh, Dracandros defeated. Journey to Assembra, wilderness, ways blocked by a chasm, blah blah blah. Okay, enter the city. Now we are going to go into the inn. No, we don't want to go into the inn yet. First we need to go to the store, pool our stuff, put on our plate mail, those of us who uh, no longer have drow armor. Okay, identify these just so I know. I know it's fireballs and ice storm, but I forget them uh, sometimes, so it's better to know. And then share out the money. 775 each. It's a lot, but not too much. Okay. 
Now let's go to the hall and train our characters up. Our fighters are level 7, our paladin included. That's very important because that means that we can now attack three times every two rounds. The first round of combat we will get uh, one attack, the second round we will get two. And if we have the haste spell on, we get three attacks every single round, which is uh, very, very nice. It's a 50% increase in damage from our melee'ers, which is a really important level. So, uh, the reason I don't use rangers in this game is that they don't get that until level 8, which they might get by the very end of the game, but that's it. Uh, so, this next section, the next two sections, having that 50% damage increase is very important. So, let's memorize. I now suddenly have a lot of spells to memorize because I have this ring of awesomeness. This ring of wizardry is a... there are certain different types. The one in this game doubles the amount of first, third, and second. First, second, and third level spells that you can use. So, that's nice. Now I have higher level cure spells as well, so fixing will go a little faster. Not that it's uh, that slow. It's a lot faster than Pool of Radiance where I have to rest for days. Okay, let's see. And that should be it. Now we're going to journey back to the Standing Stone by the trail. We meet the Strange Man again. Now we journey to Hills Far by Wilderness. Journey to Ulash by Wilderness. Uh, we ignore the cultists that we spot. Camp, save the game. Quit to Das, no. Enter the city, ask permission, we get hit by a horse on the way out, the guards come to us, we parlay, we go with the guards, they take us to this room, we save the game again, and then we quit. We do this to manipulate RNG. I'm not sure why exactly it works, uh, and it isn't always dependable. I can get different results by quitting and reloading when I get random encounters in places, but for some strange reason, when you quit the game right here, uh, it changes how the... Uh, leader, the commander of the Red Plumes, thinks about you. If I go straight in without saving and quitting, he says that we're looters and attacks us, and then we have to fight our way out of here, which is a long thing. But just by quitting and reloading, it changes the RNG, and now I'm going to get a, a random encounter right here as well that I can flee from. It's it, And that is always happens because of the RNG seed. I don't know why, but it's the uh, case. Now, um, I actually, before I go onward, I can get random other random encounters, so I want to use dust. Parlay and they flee, that's good. That's an encounter that I don't mind. Um, now I want to, this can be a nasty place, so we're going to cast haste. And bless and prayer. I probably shouldn't have cast the uh, bless, actually, but oh well. Holy cow, three of them. All right. All right, now we can go back to uh, out of combat because this wizard is pretty much going to be dead. The wizards can also cast fire shield, which once again is a uh, actually pretty devastating little trick. Save the game. All right, now we have these uh, shambling mounds. If we're lucky, we'll only fight two of them. Looks like we have four, five, yikes. Okay, that's a uh, bit of a time loss. You get two to six in this encounter. It's a set encounter, but it's a random numbers in them. Shambling mounds are immune to fire and therefore immune to our necklaces and missiles, so we just have to chop them up. We could use Ice Storm on them for half damage, but uh, however, we are about to get a really good item against them. Uh, this Wand of Defoliation, as well as a Wand of Lightning. We have a pit here, which is going to do damage to us, unfortunate. The guards wave us through the checkpoint, and now we enter the Pit of Moander. Uh, the way is buried behind us by the crazy clerics. Um, let's see. I'm going to see if I can... No, oh, I, I actually don't want to, because I don't want to have to do things again. So we're going to head straight there. Most random encounters here won't fight us, even if we get them. They're pretty rare. We have to worry about them on the way out, though. Uh, we don't want to go up because we just came down. Um, doesn't matter. Now we meet Elias and Dragonbait. The fastest thing to do is attack them and they say, Whoa, 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 we just want to join you. And then the default becomes... Because the default is to attack them. Uh, which is very odd. But the, uh, when you try to attack them, they quickly stop you from doing so and beg you to work with them. At which point, uh, working with them becomes the default option. So just spamming through that is actually faster than trying to pick through the conversation as I have previously. 
Just a slightly amusing thing to me. Okay, used us to disappearance again, so Elias and Dragon Bait are covered, and now we use our haste and our other prayer spell. And I should have had the uh, other one ready to go too. So we enter the thing where Mogion, the High Priestess of Moander, is trying to use the bonds to uh, force in order to make the... Uh... I don't want to do that real well. Okay, you just run forward and attack. You run forward and attack. You run forward and attack. You do not run forward and attack. You come over here and use this wand of weed whacking, as uh, Highwind Song, as Nightwind Song says, and it will uh, do a lot of damage to multiple of these guys. We're taking some hits, which is kind of bad. Luckily, all these priests want to cast hold person on us, but they can't. So we're going to have our cleric go ahead and use the necklace of missiles on these guys in order to, uh, yeah, that's safe. He quickly deal with them because they are not immune to uh, fire. And just gets them out of the way. They're not dangerous in this setting, of course, but uh, it's still the uh, fastest way to deal with them. While our powerful three attacks per round fighters cleave up the uh, rest of the Shambling Mounds. Okay, that's that. Now we have more awesome armor here. Uh, a new plate mail and shield, as well as a cloak. I'll go ahead and give that to him. So that he has some... Uh... This is the other plate mail plus three and shield plus two in the game. It is the best in the game. Cloak is the cloak of displacement. Really awesome thing. Gives us two armor class. Other effects as well. Now we have to kill the remnants of the god. There is one position in this uh, place for some reason that I can hit two of these guys at once. If I try to shoot it through them, I won't, but sitting right there and doing that, I will hit two of these guys. The hitbox is really weird when they're a uh, big four square. Let's see, remove that and quick combat. They're basically gigantic shambling mounds, so they're also immune to fire, but again, weak to the wand of defoliation. So that's a guaranteed 15 damage to somewhere in the 20s damage to each of them. It rolls individually per character, unlike fireballs, which is a little bit weird, but, you know, whatever. It's still a really nice little magic item you get right at the beginning of this. At least in Dragon Bait are throwing arrows from the back. They're doing just fine. Whatever. I haven't really tested if it's faster to, like, leave... Try to not be with them, leave them behind or whatever. I doubt it is. Because even though they have uh, all their extra stuff... Uh, dialogue and everything, they, uh... Attack by Shambling Mounds, as I thought. Um... How many of them? It might be faster just to, uh, kill them. Yeah, only three. I'll actually... Our haste spell is gone, so now we're slow. Probably still would have been faster, actually, to uh, reload, but oh well. Didn't hit both of them, that's weird. Okay, definitely save, so any fights, unless they're right up on me, are probably going to be... Okay, up the stairs, not down the stairs. Save the game again. Attack by Shambling Mounds. That's definitely going to be slow. Oh my word, Veggie Pygmy's right here. Um, You still have this necklace. Yeah, go ahead and use that. This will be fast enough. Okay, there we go. He's not very good. Oh well. Okay, that's gone, so I will just use Wand of Defoliation. Because the Veggie Pygmies are plant people, so they also can be defoliated. 
It's a really awesome wand because it only affects uh, plant creatures, and plant creatures are most of what you find here, and you don't find them anywhere else. This is a set encounter with some veggie pygmies, and so since there are a bunch of them and they're right here, we're going to go ahead and blow them up with our necklaces. Uh, especially since we actually uh, have been pretty not using them up as quickly this time around. Most of the time I'm already, uh, have used up one in the Drac... Kandros Caves. One of the other things about, uh, three attacks every two rounds is that the first round of combat you get the, uh, two and that's... you get one in that set, and then the second round you get two. Well, that happens whether, when, no matter what action you do. So in the first round, if you use a Necklace of Missiles, which takes your entire turn regardless, uh, the second round you can get two attacks if you plan it out carefully that way. It's a neat little thing in it. Also, if you, uh, you... it doesn't... If you have an extra attack, it basically counts as a full extra round. So if you attack a monster and it, uh... Uh, Moander Finex. Okay, only that many of them? That's fine. Let's just continue to fireball them. So if you happen to uh, use one attack and defeat an enemy, uh, it will let you use your second attack and the rest of your turn if you like. And so you can actually use that to use any magic item, necklace or whatever. Um, just cast a magic missile on him. Okay, excellent. So that wasn't too bad. Would rather not have any at all. That's a set encounter, but we can evade it. Now we get our final encounter, which hopefully is going to be the final encounter. We may end up actually getting a uh, another random encounter right before we leave, but uh, hopefully not. First use fireballs to clear out all of these enemies right here. And then we'll uh, proceed to take off the necklaces and wipe out the uh, shambling mounds. Okay, and that's that. Um, and defoliate them, of course, with our uh, other, with our fighter mage. Um, used up your last necklace, that's good. Last charge on that necklace, I mean. combat is extremely fast, though sometimes uh, also frustratingly unreliable. It's really weird. Sometimes I've had it happen where they charge off only on the left side and actually abandon the guy on the right. Just leave him alone and he's stuck there wondering what to do. And then they come back for him. Okay, Dragon Bait and Elias leave us. And we've done that. Okay, time to journey on to Ventil Keep via the Wilderness. Uh, camp here first and get our spells on. Memorize our magic missile, our two haste spells. And memorize a bless and two prayers. Alright, fix up, fix up, fix up. Save the game. Enter the city. Okay, now hopefully we will uh, get no encounters or, and especially no. We can avoid most encounters by speaking properly, but sometimes the bonds actually force us into combat. So the people of Zentil Keep are evil, and uh, they are one of the primary villains of the Forgotten Realms. And they serve the god, the evil god Bane, but there's, uh, being evil, they are, of course, have a bit of a uh, rivalry between them and such, and there's this beholder named Dexum who also serves Bane, who's a rival of Fazal, the leader of the... Uh, Okay, that was a mistake. I needed to parlay nice instead of meek. If you parlay nice, the clerics actually like you for some reason. But, uh, 
So, Fazal wants us to... He actually has one of the most uh, reasonable... I did it here, that's fine. That's close enough. Better than fighting a bunch of priests. Yeah, we're probably nice to them and they leave. Oh my word. Ah, oh, jeez. I accidentally hit return, which is on um, default of combat instead of uh, parlay. Losing a bit of time there. Not a big deal. Alright, load A. And then enter again. Okay, now this Medusa is going to be nice and get us out of here. I may need to reload again, though, depending on what happens here. Yeah. Because I'm actually... No, maybe I'll be okay. I don't need the Wand of Defoliation anymore. Because I took a step forward, that ended up hitting me. Okay. Now, I don't think that I used uh, the dust this time, so... I've entered the Cave of the Beholder, finally. This, uh... So, Fazal and the Beholder Dexum, the Beholder snuck us out. Fazal wants to use us to wield some good magic items. There are a lot of magic items that can only be used by certain... Uh, Alignments, and because the Zentil are evil, they cannot... Wait, I thought I saved it right after that battle. Okay, seriously, what's going on? I was certain that I saved it. Oh well. Okay, well the good news is I didn't get that combat again at least. Right here, this isn't bad. One encounter right here is uh, pretty nice, so... Can I start? No, of course I can't. Get that big clump there. Finally, we have a bunch of guys that we can use uh, all these fireballs on to deal with them quickly. him after all. Jeez, he's probably really hurt, too. It ran away. That's fine. Okay, yeah, 26 points is a uh, lot to be down. Sometimes the lightning bolt goes a lot farther than it should. So this is a dangerous area. We don't want any of these fights because they're a long and involved similar to that one. That room is hard, though, because it's actually broken down into a big war. This is a set encounter coming up, so we have to fight it. But Fazal... I wanted us to wield these good magic items, but as I said, there was a uh, there's a clash between the factions that serve Bane and this Beholder. Dexum is a, a big rival of his, and he didn't want him getting glory with Bane by doing this, so he uh, tried to kidnap us and figure out what the bonds were about. But before he could begin experimenting on us, Fazal busted in with his Zentil troops into Dexum's lair and said that uh, he will mess with us essentially over his dead body, and Dexum said... Uh, very well, and disintegrated him. This freed us from uh, the Sentil Keep uh, bond, thankfully. Uh, the Beholder was like, darn, oh well, killed them all, and departed with a MacGuffin that we have to get, so we need to track down the Beholder and kill him. Luckily, it's impossible to leave without him unless you uh, glitch the game into missing flags, which I have done before on accident. Uh, only through 
uh, transferring characters, though, and overusing the uh, uh, duplication exploit in multiple places. So it's not something that I have to worry about happening. But, and so that room is uh, turned into a battle zone between the priests of Bane that serve Dexum and the Zentil soldiers that serve... Uh, them and actually no encounters up to this point so this is actually a decent recovery okay so going to use dust of disappearance once more just as a safety mechanism um, and then cast our haste spell cast our prayer and bless take a step Dexum and his minions the hooded woman is a Medusa she's actually the most dangerous because again she can attack uh, stone us through invisibility very annoying uh, fortunately, we took care of her quickly, so now we can fireball all of uh, his troops. Too bad. Can't quite reach there. Very nice little fireball. Five damage. Super good. So the Beholder is immune to magic. He's supposed to have an ma anti-magic ray from his center eye, which theoretically could be used to take away our invisibility, but the game doesn't work like that. And even if it did, amusingly, uh, it still wouldn't work because he can't actually target us just because of the way the invisibility works in this game. So... The Beholder, which normally would be really dangerous, killing up to three characters a turn, is uh, instead a joke. And this actually means that the, uh, yes, with Dust of Disappearance, the Mole Master Beholder core fight, if you're familiar with that, is not exactly a difficult uh, thing. I've gone over and done it as a uh, effort just to find. And then, uh, now this uh, random encounter always comes here as well. If I, uh, the only, it, it's a random encounter, but it always follows on this set area if I did not get an encounter up to this point. I don't know why the RNG works like that again, but it's 100% reliable based on how I do the game. If I take another random encounter before this uh, and don't reload, it will actually not happen. But you have to get the random encounter anyway. Might as well take it here after we've, uh, while we still have our haste and other spells in effect. I think that's our one. Yep. Okay, now we save the game because we don't want any more encounters for the rest. This is another set encounter. Okay, he finally used up his necklace. This is smaller groups than I remember, though. I think we got lucky with uh, this group here. There's one other set encounter after this, so... Hopefully if we get lucky and that fight goes really well, we'll be out of here really soon. I'm not getting good luck with my uh, necklaces, though. Took three of them to kill most of the Minotaurs. Okay, and that's nice. Save the game. So we don't have to fight that again. Alright. Uh, last fight right here. Cast my haste spell, my other prayer spell. Uh, annoying fight because I have to fight another Dark Elf Lord, and this Dark Elf Lord does not uh, have armor that I get to steal from him, but he's otherwise almost as powerful. When we fought Burly, he actually, uh, the text tells us that there's an effect in place. His shield had a symbol of pain on it, which heavily debuffed us. You don't get to see that anywhere in the game. It doesn't really show that that's the case, unless maybe you look at the, uh, your character uh, data during the battle. You might see that your Thaco is higher than it should be. Uh, which is the stat, wonderful stat in the second edition and uh, this edition of first that determines... Uh, how hard it is that armor classes. You may notice we're in the negatives. Negatives are good. I haven't remarked upon it at all, but this is wonderful first edition D&D rules. Again, because he's a Dark Elf Lord, he's almost immune to magic. Very low chance of it hitting, so all, really all we can do is swarm over him with our swords and try and beat him down. Luckily, we are higher level at this point, so it's a little bit easier. 
And again, we aren't debuffed as well, so. Save that game. Attacked by Zentil Keep Forces, we say no. We're almost to the end. Almost out of here, and that's uh, three quarter or four fifths of the way through the game. And we're out. All right, now we journey to Ulash by Wilderness, journey to Hillsfire by Wilderness. Uh, if we travel by the roads too much, we'll be attacked by uh, fire knives uh, disguised as guards who are trying to kill us because, of, you know, we obviously uh, did so much to them. Eighth level fighters, not the eighth level paladin, unfortunately. A seventh level fighter for silver is very good, though. He does not have enough experience to level up, or enough money to level up again. Let's go to the store. Uh, pool. Identify something so our money is spread out. Share. So it's uh, changed, rather. Hall. Train. Silver can become a level 7 mage, which will give him an Ice Storm spell as well. Not that I'll probably use it, but uh, I like to have every little advantage that I can, especially in that. Two more Stinking Clouds. His Haste spells. His Ice Storm. Violet gets her Bless. Prayers. Another Cure Serious Wounds. All right. Now we journey to the Standing Stone in the wilderness. We find out that the old man at the Standing Stone is actually Tyrant Draxus. He was telling us where to go so we could eliminate his allies for him, and then he could get us all to himself. Tyrant Draxus, of course, was the boss in uh, the first game, Pool of Radiance, and we defeated him, so he wants revenge on us. Uh, he's an evil demonic spirit that can transfer for his essence to other bodies, his spirit to other bodies to control them. So he... This is a, a doubly good thing for him. He can control us and... Uh, and get... So he can get revenge on us and have uh, more powerful bodies to control at the same time. Okay, so this is an annoying fight, but it's the fastest way to get through this area into the final area. We're in the ruins of Mithraner now, actually. It's a really short thing to be doing. Okay, good. The Rakshasa can't be nasty even against uh, Dust of Disappearance, because he just has such a low armor class. Uh, and the trap is really annoying. It can do a lot of damage to a lot of us, but a big deal. Okay, we continue onward. Now Tyrant Traxxas takes control of us. He's trying to dispose of the three MacGuffins we picked up by defeating Dracandros and everybody else. But uh, unfortunately for him, Nameless, the guy who created Elias, uh, because Elias is actually a flesh golem, not a real human, but uh, she's very close to a human. She's uh, It's it's a complicated thing. It's a wonderful part of the story of Azure Bonds and uh, the later books that follow it as well. But anyway, he was posing as one of the priests, and uh, he is able to temporarily nullify the control over us as well as just happens to uh, save the artifacts for us. He somehow made it look like they were destroyed only, but they weren't actually. I don't know. It works somehow. Don't question. Uh, he's killed by Tyrant Draxus. Luckily, this game is not canon. He returns in the other books, so we don't have to feel bad for him. Unfortunately, I believe Fazal, the leader of the Sentinel Keep, also returns in later things, and he got disintegrated, so, you know, whatever. Again, not canon, so very sad, but what can you do? So name, but uh, now we have to track down Tyrant Draxus and defeat him, and that's the last of our masters, and we're done with the game. And now they're running away, which is inconvenient. I believe I can reach them with necklaces, though. Again, Hellhound's also not immune to fire. Very inconvenient for a fire-breathing species that's supposed to be, you know, semi-devils and therefore live in hell. And, of course, we get a random encounter right after this, too.
Again, the most annoying thing about this game, I think, is that you can get random encounters on the same steps as event squares, so... It means I can't even save it and uh, then skip that encounter. There, this area can be really bad for random encounters. The RNG for random encounters in this game is wild. It's really bad at sometimes, and sometimes it's perfectly fine. Luckily, getting a random encounter uh, reduces the chance of getting them further, so... For a little bit, so luckily that meant that we made it through the rest of there without any encounters. Sometimes that is not uh, reliable, though. Uh, these encounters are also extremely random in how many people are there. So I'm going to be checking their things. If there's only one or two people, maybe three people, I'll just go ahead and fireball them down and move on. Especially since I have a lot of extra missile charges. Uh, and if I... And sometimes you get that. Encounters that literally have zero enemies. It showed a Margoyle, but there were zero Margoyles, so uh, they died instantly. Two guys? Yeah, we can take that. A couple of fireballs should uh, bring them down. I'll only hit one there, unfortunately, so I need to be past him, which isn't that much of a problem, actually. Yeah, actually, I can do that. Doesn't it? She's getting a little bit low. She used a lot, but that's okay. Awesome. Only one left. He's not going to reach. You will reach. You only have one left as well, but that's okay. We should only have one fight left. Still, I think, was almost slower than uh, saving and reloading, but at least I'm more steps now. Okay. Now, they're too far away. Sometimes I forget about how long it takes to reach them, especially since I don't have uh, fast movement speed at this point. Okay, this is it. Cast our haste spell, cast our blessing prayer. Uh, just to make sure, use one more dust so it doesn't run out any time. It lasts forever, but it's still better to be prepared. All right, now. Very weak fireball, that one. Wonderful. Three damage to those who save. Most spells in uh, AD&D hit automatically, but they do have a, at least in the early editions. There are a lot more that actually you have to hit with in later editions, which I think is bad because you have such limited number of them. Hitting automatically is kind of the uh, bonus, but uh, any of the ones that are really dangerous do give you a chance to save, and especially the big, a lot of big AOE spells like fireballs and lightning bolts, you have a chance to, uh, you save for half damage. In later editions, you can have classes like rogues and rangers and monks that can have evasion, which allows them to take even less damage and maybe no damage if they save. Uh, you know, which is one of the cool things about them. They add a lot more abilities. In the early game, not too many people have abilities, and the more abilities you have, the longer it takes you to uh, level up, generally. Thieves are far and away the weakest pieces of trash, as vital as they are to unlock doors and uh, disarm traps and such things, and so they actually level up really, really fast. Clerics are actually the next fastest, even though they're pretty well around, because they don't have uh, much offensive potential. Uh, at least early on. Later on, once they start getting more powerful spells, uh, the, their uh, experience curve changes a whole lot. Uh, mages are one of the most. Fighters are somewhere in the middle. Paladins are actually the very most. Uh, it just so happens that Paladin is still pretty decent in this game, so I have one. Uh, because they will reach level 7 at the same time as the fighters and get that big power spike of uh, having three attacks every two rounds. Okay, this is it. Now we just kill Tyrant Draxus, who is immune to fire, so we have to chop him down. Now, you can reduce the numbers in this uh, area by clearing out the rest of his temple, but, I mean, that's slow. Why do that when we can just come in and fireball him to death? Or all of his troops, anyway, and then cleave him down. And that's it. 
We defeated Tyrant Thraxus. We used the Gauntlet of Moander to destroy his uh, Pool of Radiance so he can't go through it and return to another body. The final curse is lifted. We are free at last. The Knights of Myth Draenor, who've been trying to take this Elven City back, bust in and find that we've killed Tyrant Thraxus and they take us away to celebrate. We have one final text box. That is it. Curse of the Azure Bonds. One hour, eight minutes. Again, pretty much the entirety of this time save is uh, just because I have the game running on a higher speed. Because the Pool of Radiance community decided that... Uh, I, it has a community now, amazingly. Over the last couple months, it developed one. And uh, we discussed the uh, the speed of it. When I started running these games and no one else was running them, I just decided to use the default DOS box speed. I thought it was fast enough, and uh, you can make the, it faster in-game anyway, so I was fine with that. But... They really wanted to increase the time of the speed, and I'm like, oh, that reduced the time speed. I don't care. If everybody wants to do it, uh, I'm okay with that, too. So since Pool of Radiance is uh, there. Um, let's see. We don't have a Discord or anything yet, but uh, there is... Um, but on speedrun.com, the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Pool of Radiance... If you search for Pool of Radiance, uh, you should be able to find it. We have a forum and everything now, and we're posting the things. But it's a little group on speedrun.com is effectively where that is. So, yep. I am no longer, because of that, I'm no longer the world record holder for Pool of Radiance because a Rich B, uh, the other guy who's put a lot of work into Pool of Radiance now. He hasn't touched the other games yet, but he's put a lot of work into Pool of Radiance and he uh, has got some really excellent uh, work down that I just can't emulate, but it's, it's really awesome. A year ago, I was submitting these games to RPG Limit Break, and uh, my PB for Pool of Radiance was 124, any percent. Now, uh, Rich B's world record is 10 minutes, and 100% is 42, I th wanna say. Because we, we started working on the 100% when he tackled that 41 minutes, nine seconds for 100%, doing all the uh, quests in the game. Pretty much clearing all the areas. Or at least... ...primary quest they wanted. So that's, uh... Pretty, pretty big. So... Um... I have other stuff to do today. I would like to uh, start streaming in longer periods and such. Uh, but I'm still at the point where one run, even a shorter one like this, is pretty much all I can do in a day. But going forward, I'm gonna start trying to do more. Maybe do a run of this and then find something else. Um, I need to work on Secret of Silver Blades more because I'm running that in an upcoming marathon. Other than that, it's about time for me to start tackling other gold box games. I want to start working on the Dragonlance ones because other people have, uh, there's been somebody else who's run the, uh, Champions of Kryn. I think that's the first one of the, uh, of the Dragonlance gold box games. So I'd like to get a run in on that as well and, uh, add to it. As well as move on to Gateway to the Savage Frontier. A lot of people ask about Pools of Darkness. I am not at all ready for Pools of Darkness. That's a huge game. Although at 6,000 speed, it'll go a little quicker. But there's just so much to the game, and it is really difficult at the end, and I just don't feel like beating my head on that. So this is probably that the three-game setup is going to be the extent of what I do for this uh, gold box game. But anyway, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks for uh, watching. And uh, I'll be back again tomorrow with some more gold box runs. I'll figure out what I'm going to do then. Probably Secret of the Silver Blades, but uh, we'll see what else I can do. Until then, later.